We are one week away from the final cut down of the NFL training camp season, August 29th. NFL teams have to have their first 53-man roster in. We're going to break it all down here now on your latest Lockdown Browns, which starts now. You are Locked On Browns, your daily Cleveland Browns podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends, your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound LGB on the LOB, the Lockdown Browns podcast brought to you by the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Your host, Jeff Lloyd, appreciate everybody who makes Lockdown Browns their first listen every single day. A ton of new traffic over the last 48 hours. Appreciate you all for joining the everyday crowd by subscribing to the Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. The show is always available. It's always free wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, segment two, segment three, we're going to get you a 25 on offense, a 25 on defense, what should make up the Browns 53-man roster. This is not a prediction. This is what I would do, but we will get to that. We're going to start you all off here, your Cleveland Browns news of the day. Um, Joe Batonio, Miles Garrett in probably the last 36 hours, uh, restructuring both guys' contracts. Now, no, no major moves are imminent. No power moves. They're not going to go drop $20 million on somebody's coming. But this does give them flexibility to bring somebody in if they feel that fits. Obviously, they can go out and get somebody. They certainly have the cap space to do that. But basically, restructuring means that you are paying out cash um, to these guys now. And since the cap is growing every year, this means you can reduce the percentage of cap you use over a five-year period. There are new TV contracts coming. The salary cap grows every single season. So it gives you this way to basically maintain flexibility for the Browns to be big spenders like we've seen them be the last couple of years. Doesn't mean the money is getting spent today. No but it does give the Browns the opportunity to field a competitive roster for years to come. And it does give them the move, the, the ability to make a move this year. If when they need, they choose to do just so um, practice out in Berea today. Um, it was, it was more of a, like a knowledge type of practice, uh, you know, no pads. Um, and this is one where you're working on more things, very heavy special teams day. Um, but this is one where you, you're just trying to get more things in and with the starters playing, there's probably a little more, you know, game planning here. Um, when you're playing more reserves, you, it's more vanilla of the playbook that you're going to go out there with. Um, but you're going to have what we believe starters playing 20, 25 reps on Saturday. Um, we're not sure. There was no commitment on whether Nick Chubb will play Saturday. I do not need to see Nick Chubb play in a preseason game. I'm going to be honest with you. I think somebody who's going to play a lot is going to be Wilkins. Um, with the status update from Coach Stefanski on Jerome Ford, which was basically no status update on Jerome Ford, means to tell me that, you know, and keep in mind that you guys, you know, this in the past, you know, the Browns, if they're very wishy-washy and cautious about a guy on Thursday, Friday of a game week, he usually doesn't play on Sunday. So Jerome Ford, even if he makes it back to the practice field anytime after September 4th, which is Monday, Labor Day, um, it doesn't mean the Browns are going to play him September 10th anyway. Is he going to make the 53-man roster? Yes, he's going to make the 53-man roster. Um, but that doesn't mean the Browns are going to be any put, you know, any hurry to push him back um, for, of course, the home opener, season opener against the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, Jack Conklin still out in the protocol. Uh, Anthony Schwartz out with the hamstring. And, you know, I think, you know, we all understand, you know, this is, you know, the end of days here for Anthony Schwartz with the Cleveland Browns. You know, for me personally, I uh, hope he finds success somewhere. Um, you know, this guy just, I always liked, sadly, just never really came together for him here. Um, we can never put any consistency together with his play or with his health. Um, Brian Goodwin, they are still working through the medical issues that both are going through. Um, we've heard in the last couple of days that they think Harrison Bryant 
things are maybe trending better for him, but still not at practice. So certainly not, you know, anything to, uh, you know, you know, for those who are looking for some hope on the Harrison Bryant situation, obviously we don't have any uh, yet to that point. Um, Jalen Darden, um, pos uh, position drills today to participated in. Um, it's going to be real, real late in the game for Jalen Darden here because, you know, even if he gets back to full practice the next couple of days, um, starters playing 20 to 25 reps. Where does that give the opportunity for a guy like Jaden Jalen Darden to maybe get something going here in the second half against the Kansas City Chiefs? Um, if the Browns like him, I do believe the opportunity would be there. If the Browns were to release him at final roster cut down, they could probably sneak him back on the practice squad. Um, no kicker has been brought in. A um, couple of names were available over the last couple of days. Nobody was brought in. My belief is that they're going to give Cade, Lork, Cade York this final preseason game. And if Cade does well, they're going to roll in a week one with Cade York. If Cade York, Cade York does not do well, then maybe it's just a, you know let him go and find something out. But I, I do believe – and a little response I've got back from those I've reached out to, they feel the Browns are still in the long game. And I'm not saying Cade York's going to be here the entire season, but the Browns are still in the long game here with Cade York um, as far as being their kicker. Um, they don't want to get burned. Look, the Browns have moved on from a lot of kickers who ended up being pretty good in other places. I mean, look what Greg Joseph did for the Minnesota Vikings last year. Uh, so it's a difficult spot to be in. But the Browns understand he's young. They understand that maybe put too much pressure on him last year um, as a rookie. Um, not every rookie kicker is going to put up a year like Evan McPherson did a couple of years ago for the Cincinnati Bengals. That's just a realization and the facts of it. Um, you, Justin Tucker, there aren't Justin Tuckers available. If there were, everybody would have one, of course. Uh, so we'll see what wakes it out. You know, the, I know people bring up the Chargers situation. Um, Chargers, you know, kickers out there. And obviously, you know, Dicker the kicker, which is a great popular name. Um, and we'll see. You know, we'll see the way it plays out between Hopkins and Dicker. You know, obviously the Chargers are only to keep one of them. Uh, so we'll see if there's an opportunity there. And maybe the Browns have interest in either one of those guys. But, you know, for now, it is still Cade York. Cade York still holding it down. Um, I got a lot of, you know, questions about, you know, um, and a lot of messages to me about the Browns and the potential uh, the potential of keeping seven wide receivers here. Um, that's why today seemed like a good day to get in this last one here. You always try to manage your content and when's the best to run with what, you know, is good, what you guys want to hear, as opposed to what is the breaking news, you know, saying I never want to disrupt what is the more important news, but there still are these types of things that I have many, many listeners that I really are interested in and want to hear. So that's why today became maybe you know the last ditch effort out of 53. We'll see the way the weekend works out and maybe we can get one in maybe Sunday, whatever, Monday before we get to final roster cutdowns and we finally know what the gist of it is and the deal of it is come Tuesday, August 29th. We're going to start shifting gears here now. We're going to get to segment two here my thoughts on what should be the final 53 on the browns offensive side of things so it's jeff lloyd your latest lockdown browns i appreciate everybody for sticking around Today's job market, it's very, very difficult to find the right people you need. And every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% sure that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. You put in what you're looking for, what type of you know programs you want your applicants to be familiar with, what type of education you're looking for. Then add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you are hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you would like to interview and potentially hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash LockdownNFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash LockdownNFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Jeff Lloyd, your latest Locked On Browns. I appreciate all of you who make Locked On Browns your first listen every single day. Whole bunch of you have joined the everyday party now, 6,400 strong and growing. The best way to do that, of course, is to subscribe to the Locked On Browns YouTube channel. And, of course, Locked On Browns, it's always available. It's always free wherever you get your podcasts. So most likely and in most instances, when you're putting together a 53-man roster, you go with the thought – premise of 25 players on offense, 25 players on offense, obviously your kicker, your punter, your long snapper, 
I'm not going to waste anybody's time here. You've already heard my thoughts about the kicker position. We know Barakwas is going to be your punter. And, of course, we know who the long snapper is. He's been here longer than I have been covering the Cleveland Browns. Um, so you go to what should be, in my opinion, the Browns' final 53-man roster as of now. Um, some of these are going to be interesting, and they're going to certainly evolve. They could evolve as soon as, you know, right after the first couple. Um we know Deshaun Watson is your quarterback. We know Dorian Thompson Robinson is going to make this ro the roster. We know Josh Dobbs is going to make this roster. I know a lot of people question who's number two, who's number three. In my opinion, it is DTR. It is easily DTR. It's not even close. Um, I think DTR, and I don't know if you uh, got a chance to check out, PFFC was on the Ross Tucker podcast. Ross Tucker did the play-by-play. -play. I'm sorry, the uh, color commentary for the uh, Eagles-Browns playoff game. Um, and Steve from PFF just, you know, he talked about DTR at length and just how impressive he has been to this point. And for me, the impressive thing is th just you're a rookie. Your head is on a swivel. Things are coming at you 5 million miles an hour. And you go back to the first game against the Jets, you know, that, that inkling where he was rolling out, got himself off the sidelines, righted himself, balanced himself, still had extra yardage. Then, of course, it was the block that sprung Dimitri Felton for the touchdown round. That is just headsy, headsy stuff for a rookie quarterback. Granted, DZR played a lot of college football, so maybe this these moments aren't as big for him as maybe some other guys who haven't played 40-plus college starts. That is crazy, crazy impressive. And then, of course, Philadelphia Eagles on the road in a stadium against a team whose starters played and lost, sadly, uh, the most previous Super Bowl. DTR is a very, very electric young talent. It's going to be interesting to see the way this works out for this young guy because if Sean Watson lights it up for the Browns over the next couple of years, DTR could be a piece that the Browns could move um, and then find, you know, get something back and then just start basically the cycle all over again by drafting another young quarterback to be Deshaun's number two. The running back position, we know Nick Chubb. Uh, obviously, no doubt about it. Jerome Ford is going to make this roster, whether he's available week one or not. We have no idea. I think you could end up with a spot where the Browns keep three running backs on the initial 53-man roster. And the status of Jerome Ford, and I don't know if the Browns truly think Demetri Felton can help them in the running game in the regular season is a question. John Kelly, I love John Kelly. Love him coming to Tennessee. I just don't think it's there. And then it puts you to Hassan Hall, which – you know, Hassan Hall could be a really, really great candidate for the Browns to stash on the practice squad. I think he's a player that could contribute for this team in 2023. It might be a lot later on than September, but the Browns have to start thinking about what is the best 53-man roster to put against the Cincinnati Bengals, the, Ten uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Tennessee Titans, the Baltimore Ravens, and the San Francisco 49ers. And the other chips can fall where they may as far as injuries and other things, but the Browns have to put together this roster based on these first six weeks, five games within six weeks. So those could be the three running backs the Browns keep. Um, of course, Jerome Ford maybe not playing in that game. One of these guys could be brought up from the practice squad. See the way that works out. Um, just switch it up here in the order that we did it here to get to my number 25. Of course, uh, tight ends and slam dunk, of course. You know, David Njoku, uh, you know, a, uh, Jordan Akins, uh, Harrison Bryant. Um, Harrison Bryant will be kept on the 53-man roster if Browns have to keep one of the other two tight ends, stash them on the practice squad so they can stick them in. I think they would be able to keep either one of those guys without issues if Harrison Bryant is not ready to go for them week one against the Bengals. I'm going to put seven, seven wide receivers on this Browns first 53-man roster. Amari Cooper, Donovan, Elijah Moore, Cedric Tillman, David Bell. They're locks, and if you, I don't want to hear it anymore, David Bell. David Bell is a lock. Um, Jakeem Grant, uh, I've talked in the past, you know, they, every guys, you guys all love what Elijah Moore can bring to this offense. You know, the special sauce, the uniqueness that he can bring to this offense. And I'm sure the Browns do too. But the thing is, is when you're going to start doing this and you have a player and for Elijah, look, th th this isn't just what he can do. Elijah is a fantastic wide receiver. He's a great route runner. Um, we haven't seen much of the Elijah Moore experience yet this year. Of course, the only preseason game he played in, he was shut down a little bit early, um, but certainly has the capabilities here. But when you're doing the jet sweeps, when you're putting a running back in the backfield, when you're trying to run screens with a running back out of the backfield, if this hits like the Browns think it's going to hit, you have to basically have a backup plan for that. Who can do these things? Jalen Darden was maybe in contention for that, but Jalen Darden not contributing since the team was in West Virginia at the Greenbrier certainly basically derailed any possibility he had of making this final 53-man roster. But Jakeem Grant, Jakeem Grant can do all these things. Jakeem Grant, no doubt, in a smaller size, smaller dosage, he's probably not going to be able to put up the overall production numbers that Elijah Moore can. 
But Jakeem Grant has been a problem in this league. And the other thing is, without Jerome Ford, that leaves you without a kick returner. And Donovan Peoples-Jones, maybe he can go back there and return punts. Um, but Donovan Peoples-Jones in a contract here, the last thing you want to do is maybe put yourself out there and get hurt not doing your primary job. So Jakeem Grant, I think right now, probably has a nice spot loan up, sewn up for himself. Watkins, I'm in. I, I am all about the Watkins train. I like everything he's done to this point. Had another big catch in practice today. I know there's a lot of people bringing up, well, we don't see him out there doing anything special teams. Well, come August 29th, we'll know whether or not the Browns think Watkins has done enough to make this final three-man roster, 53-man roster, which gives Watkins that Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, so it gives him about 11 practices. Granted, the Browns won't practice that much, but 11 days where he can learn some things. Can he play outside contain on the kickoff team? It's not a hard position. Basically, you run down, you make sure you're within, you know, six, five to seven yards of the sideline. And if the guy is coming your way, you make sure he does not get past you on the outside. And if he does get past you on the outside, he's got to go out physically to do that. I think in 11, practice, 11 days, nine practices, I think you could teach any professional athlete to probably handle that job. Um, most of the other Browns special teams jobs are kind of sewn up. You're not going to put him inside. So I know there's a lot of people bringing up the fact that he's not doing anything in practice as far as a special teamer. I get it, but it doesn't matter right now. Come August 29th, he makes this team. Yeah, he's going to be spending a lot of more time with Bubba Ventrone than maybe he's going to be spending catching passes, and that's fine. But to this point, it looks like the kid worked it. I don't know if anybody saw a little video. Uh, he signed some autographs for military personnel today. And one guy told him, he's like, man, I really, really hope you made it. And Watkins basically looked at him and said, man, I pray I do. Who don't want that NFL money, right, guys? Let's go. Um, offensive line. Jed, Joel, Ethan Posick, of course, Wyatt Teller, and, of course, um, Jack Conklin. So there's your five starting offensive linemen. Uh, Huddy. Um, It'll be interesting because I think Huddy could be a swing guy. I think Huddy could be a guy that kicks down on the inside. Um, I think Michael Dunn is your top reserve guard, so he makes this team. Luke Whipler is your backup center, maybe your center of the future here. Um, and Nick Harris, you know, it's a last year. Um, you're moving on from Nick Harris at the end of the season anyway. If the Browns can find a way to move him, or maybe Nick Harris can get a shot somewhere else. Um, it's, it was never Nick Harris's fault. You know, J.C. Treader played another season that the Browns didn't think when they originally drafted Nick Harris. Then he went down, Posick came in, Posick excelled, and all of a sudden here was Nick Harris roadblocked again at the position. And, of course, Dewan Jones. Dewan Jones, it, does he get more work at left tackle? Do the Browns maybe feel better as him with him as their swing tackle as opposed to Hudson? But I have the Browns keeping nine offensive linemen. So three quarterbacks, three running backs, three tight ends, seven wide receivers, nine offensive linemen. That gets you to 25 on the offensive side of the ball for the Cleveland Browns. Um, look, and as quickly as the Browns make their cuts and get down to their first 53 is when the roster minutia and the roster gymnastics continue. But, you know, for me, this is the way I would go right now for the Cleveland Browns on the offensive side of the ball. I know some people have liked Tyrone Wheatley Jr., and I, I think he's been pretty good as well, but I think he could be a stash candidate on the practice squad. Um, and I'm not I'm not keeping 10 if I don't have to. Um, I have Bill Callahan. I can find somebody else, stash him on the practice squad, and I can have Coach Callahan work with the man and a young man. And if I ever have to go to him, hopefully Coach Callahan has put the work in and the due diligence in to get the kid ready. Also, if we have to go to him, maybe it's not going well for the Cleveland Browns anyway, so maybe it doesn't really even matter, guys. I'm going to flip it up here. I'm going to go with my Browns 53 on the defensive side of the ball. For now, your latest Lockdown Browns, Jeff Lloyd. I appreciate everybody for tuning in. Stick around. Segment three coming up next. Bird dogs make you look good. Bird dog stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. They fit way better than regular shorts that are made of a stiff, restricting cotton. Bird dogs fix this issue by inventing cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice uh, any movement. Bird Dogs uses anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. The thing I can tell you all about Bird Dogs is 
I can't find mine. The joggers, I have a bunch of them. I love them. But every time I turn around, I know I put them in the hamper. I know my wife puts them in the laundry. But when it comes time to find them, to put them away in the drawer, they've been absconded by the kids. Go to birddogs.com slash NFL or enter the promo code LOCKEDONNFL for a free white tech hat with your order. That's birddogs.com slash NFL or promo code LOCKEDONNFL for a free white tech hat. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you that. Closing it out here, segment three, your host, Jeff Lloyd. Appreciate all of you who make Locked On Browns your first list in the everyday crowd. The everyday party gets bigger every day, every day. And I appreciate you all. And thank you all so much for that. So make sure you subscribe to Locked On Browns YouTube channel. Always available, always free, wherever you get your podcast. And you can find Locked On Browns on every one of them. Now my seventh season. Um, it's been a hell of a ride to this point. I am looking for, I'm not looking for good days anymore. I'm looking for great days anymore. I'm looking for the best days now hosting the, uh, the Lockdown Browns podcast. And of course, you're covering the Cleveland Browns. We obviously did our 25 on O. We're going to give us our 25 on D here. Defensive end, Miles Garrett. Surprise, surprise. I think he's going to make the cut, guys. Zadarius Smith, of course. Ogbenai Okoronkwo. Uh, Isaiah McGuire. And Isaiah McGuire, I'm sorry, Isaiah McGuire, I'm going to keep Alex Wright. Um, Isaiah McGuire, uh, Alex Wright and, uh, of course, Isaiah Thomas in this odd situation, um, both probably out for September with these knee injuries, and Browns really haven't given any updates yet to this point. And obviously we understand, of course. Um, so I'm going to keep the five. Um, there could be somebody, the Browns, and it could even be Alani Phelps, somebody the Browns can put through the process, put on the practice squad. Because if the Browns are going to dress five DNs, Come week one, week two, week three, week four, they don't have a 50 end as of right now to dress as far as what my 53 man is. So the Browns are going to find somebody, hopefully, to put the practice squad, be able to move them back up and forth and be able to contribute here uh, for this team till Alex Wright, Isaiah Thomas. We'll see the way it works out for both these guys here. Uh, defensive tackles. Uh, Dalvin Tomlinson, of course, is going to make this team. Shelby Harris starting to see his first first team reps here. Um, as he's getting a little more, a little more familiar with the system, getting a little bit more into football shape here. Um, Ika, Siani Ika, obviously going to make this team. Um, Jordan Elliott, and look, I'm not confident by any means whatsoever keeping Jordan Elliott on a final 53-man roster, but that guaranteed money kind of speaks volumes that the Browns went out, renegotiated the deal, guaranteed the number for this season. Um, so that tells me that they think, and look, we've heard it every year. Have we ever seen it? Not necessarily. But, you know, everybody seems to love Jordan Elliott, seem to rave about Jordan Elliott. Who knows? Year four, maybe, you know, maybe the unicorn year for Jordan Elliott. I'm keeping Maurice Hurst. I am. Um, you've seen a lot of quick on the inside. I think Maurice Hurst is a guy that can contribute and you know, second and long, third and long. I would love the Browns to be able to have the ability to sub in, sub out some bigger guys in the interior in nickel and dive situations. Um, you know, I don't think Maurice Hurst is going to be a guy that starts in base defense, but that's okay because I think Dalvin Thomason can do that. I think Shelby Harris can do that. I think the plan is for Ika ultimately to be able to do that. Um, or the Browns could even just start Jordan Elliott and then start rotating in, uh, you know, rotating in, in nickel and dime situations. Shelby Harris and, of course, Maurice Hurst, who are good pass rushers from the interior. And you could always use Ika, you know, to basically be the other one, you know, short yardage. Or if Elliott's just not got it going on, Browns can get a little more beef in there on the inside by bringing in Seattle Ika. Uh, linebackers, I'm keeping six. And some there's a guy here who obviously you guys all know has created a serious, serious issue for the Browns at the linebacker position. Uh, JOK staying, Anthony Walker is staying, Taki Taki is staying, uh, Tony Fields. For my opinion, he's done enough here. And I, the fact that Tony Fields isn't getting blocked, seeing a lot more confident player who can basically just trust his eyes and read and diagnose and go make plays. And Tony Fields had a pretty good summer for this team. Uh, Jordan Kunashik, I'm keeping him. Uh, look, defense coordinator, where's your jersey? You're good on special teams. Kind of feels like that's a pair of players probably going to make this roster. Um, uh, Muhammad uh, Diabata, I can't. I, I cannot move on from him. Um, that seven solo tackle game on Thursday night football, national football game. He will not, the Browns will not get the opportunity to get the Abate back. So if the Browns want him, he has to be on the 53 man roster and <clears throat> knowing it could be the last year of Anthony Walker. It could be the last year of Taki Taki, um, JOK and fields now in year three for the two of them. I, I need a younger guy in the room and Diabate looks like he's a player to this point. 
And if I'm the Browns, it's just too risky of a proposition to move on from this guy. So ideally, do I want to kick, keep six linebackers? Nope, not at all. Uh, but Diabate has made this case, you know, similar to Watkins on the other side. These guys have made this case really, really difficult for this team to turn their backs on these guys and move on from these players. So I got them both staying. Uh, cornerback Denzel Ward, Greg Newsom, Martin Emerson Jr., uh, Cameron Mitchell, A.J. Green. I'm only keeping five. Um, Browns are healthy right now. You can always find corners in the NFL. And listen to me, once you get into four, corners four, five, and six, it don't matter. If you're playing corners four, five, and six, it's probably going to be a rough day anyway. So the Browns and these other guys that are there in the cornerback room now, they could be stashed on the practice squad. If you have to elevate them, you have to elevate them. But again, you know, the Browns, ideally the quarterback cornerback reps are locked down. It's going to be Denzel. It's going to be Greg Newsom. Of course, it's going to be Martin Emerson Jr. Safety position. Um, we all know Juan Thornhill and he'll return Saturday to Kansas City. Um, you know, where you know, beginning of his career, two Super Bowl championship teams. Um, he's looking forward to it. He's excited about it. It's probably better that he go back this first time, get all the newness the first time. He's going back to save everybody in a preseason game because who knows? Maybe the Browns and the Kansas City Chiefs will uh, meet again at a much bigger opportunity here in 2023. Uh, Rodney McLeod is making this team. Grant Talbot is making this team. There's no question on either of those two players. And Ronnie Hickman, I think this one was, you know, for me, it was over before it started. You know, the age factor, five years younger than DeAnthony Bell, better in coverage than DeAnthony Bell. Yes, DeAnthony Bell plays special teams. Doesn't mean Hickman can't. Yes, DeAnthony Bell can play a little bit better around the box. That's fine. Um, I'll take a guy who's had three interceptions in two games. The guy's got a ball hawking mentality on a team that desperately, desperately needs to create turnovers and manufacture turnovers, something that they have not been able to do in years. So there is your 53. Obviously, your offense, obviously, your defense. For now, Cade York, of course, Corey Baracquez. And, of course, Mr. Hewlett as your long snapper for the Cleveland Browns. Your My last attempt, that will be the Cleveland Browns final 53. We'll see. You know, things happen Saturday where I got to alter it, maybe throw in an episode. I'll be sure to do that for you guys here. I am Jeff Lloyd. I am your host here at Lockdown Browns. Now my seventh season with you all covering your favorite uh, cardiac kids, the Cleveland Browns here. Um, I, again, I just want to thank everybody, you know, all the people who make the Lockdown Browns their first listen every single day. Uh, everybody's part of the everyday crowd. Subscribe to the Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. You guys mean the world to me. Um, that number keeps growing. Um, and I've seen the last couple of days, the comments, the likes, the traffic I'd e each episode is getting. Um, I can't get the opportunity to jump in there more, and I will. I will try. I truly will. But don't think I'm not reading them. Don't think I'm not looking at them. You know, some of them make me laugh. Um, some of them, you know, I know the same people who are in there every day taking their pot shots, and that's fine too, man. You guys are going to come listen. Uh, you know, negative criticism, positive criticism. Hey, if you're here watching every day, I'll take it all, and I'll take it all with a grain of salt. Uh, yeah, and, of course, Lockdown Rounds is always available, always free, wherever you get your podcast. This has been your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound. LGB on ELOB. Let's go Browns.